Hello and welcome to the Productivity Exchange. My name is Florian and today we're looking at summarizing and pulling data from tables. So to begin with, here is our data. Now, just as a note, I've linked to this data set down below, so you'll be able to access this data and have a play around with it yourself. Coincidentally, it's the same data set that we used for the regular expressions video link in the title card. Now, I like to keep the data sheet separate from my summary statistics and then any other sort of sheets that I have down here. So the data will always be clean and shouldn't be getting edited in any way, shape or form by the formulas that I'm applying to it. That just ensures that the data here doesn't get tampered with or any sort of data integrity issues slip in. So this is my data here. You'll note that it's not a proper Excel table, but the data like this will do just fine for our purposes today. I will cover how Excel tables work in a future video. So the first formula that I'm going to use is unique. So to list the unique elements, we just use equals unique open parentheses, then we specify what array uh, it is looking for. So I'll just go here. And then control shift down, close parentheses. So I can see that the formula is in this cell, because I can edit it here. Uh, but I can also see that it's spilt over into these additional rows here. So you can see that the formula is grayed out here and I can't edit it, but it's pulled all of the unique values in that particular range that I've specified here. If I were to change one of these here to say potato and then head back to the summary statistics, I can see that it's added a new line for potato. I'll just undo that. There we go. Alrighty, next we will cover the count a and count blank functions. So count a counts the non blank cells in a particular range. So the way we can do that is equals count a, and then we just need to specify either value one, comma, value two, comma, etc, etc. Or what we can do is we can also just specify a range like this, close parentheses, there we go. And what that's done is it's counted the cells that contain content. Notice that this blank cell has not been counted. So count A counts non blank cells for a particular range. Now count blank does the opposite. Now if I type count blank and select the same range as before and close parentheses, I would expect that to return one and indeed it returns one. Next up, count if. This tells you how many cells in a given range match a particular condition that you've given it. So in this case, what I can do is I can just type equals count if and give it the range over in data. And uh, we can just go control shift down. And then we just need to define the criteria. So in our case, the criteria is going to be, uh, let me just click back to summary statistics and select supervisor on the side here. Now I'm going to make this a cell reference. It doesn't necessarily need this because it's on the same sheet, but uh, because we've clicked it down here, it'll put it in. It doesn't really matter. So for clarity, I'll just get rid of it. And then we just close that. There we go. So I can see that there are 126 supervisors at the company. What I can also do if I paste the formula down here, I can also change this reference to that and this reference to that. There we are. So we can see how many supervisors, managers and frontline workers we have. Now these cell references here, I could just as well have typed in frontline. And what that'll do is the exact same thing as before, but cell references make this infinitely more useful. Just make sure that if you have data ranges that you lock your range before pulling it down or that you just copy and paste the formula down. I'll do a video on locking cells like this in the future. So this last one to count the number of employees under the age of 50 is going to be a little bit trickier. So what I'll do is I'll type in count if and then I will select my range as I did before, control shift down, comma, and then I just need to give this a criteria. So the criteria is going to be less than 50, but what I need to do is make sure that this is in quotation marks like this. Close the parenthesis, hit enter, and I can see that the number of employees under the age of 50 is 327. 
So sometimes you don't just want to count the number of items in a particular category, you want to sum the number of items in a particular category. So in this case, what I want to do is sum all of the pay last financial year for each job category. So what I can do is I can just type sum if, and I can give it a range. So these are the if criteria. So if it is a supervisor or a frontline worker or a manager, the next condition in the formula is the criteria. So what I'll do here is I'll come back to summary statistics and click on supervisor. And then we'll notice that one of the optional arguments in this formula is a sum range. Now, because we can't sum the roll type column, we want to sum this range, we can specify that range here. So I'll just drop that down with control shift down and hit enter. There we go. I can just make these dollar fields like this. So I can see that last year I spent $6,944,617 on supervisors. Equally, I can do the same thing for managers. Copy that formula, paste it here and there and then just change out the field that I'm referring to. So you'll notice that sum if is very similar to count if with the only addition being the sum range that you can specify here. Sometimes you don't need to add the sum range because your original range is the one that you want to do the summary on and your criteria will have some sort of logic like amounts less than $100 or something along those lines. In most cases that I've found, I have a separate range to sum range. And similarly to the count if where we had the less than 50 criteria, what I want to do here is sum all of the salaries for people under the age of 50. So I can do that by typing sum if specifying the range. So the age range is the one that we want to compare against. Then I want to enter the condition. So that's less than 50. Remember, you need to put these in the quote marks like this. And then I just want to provide it with the sum range which should be that. There we go. So I can see that employees under the age of 50 accounted for $13.635 million. So now let's look at lookup functions. Lookup functions allow you to look for a particular value in a table and then return a corresponding value in another column. So for example, if I wanted to know the salaries for each of these people in this list, what I can do here is I can type equals V lookup. Then I specify the value to look up. That's the first one, lookup value. Next, it asks me to specify the table array. And what I need to do with uh, VLOOKUP is make sure that the first column is always the column that I'm doing the lookup in and then going across and down. So this will be my table. So I'm going from the name column all the way over to the salary column because I need the salary values in my formula. Now, the next thing that we need to add is the column index um, to return. So the lookup value will always be searched for in column one. So column one, two, three, four, five, six, the salary data is in column six. So I'll just type column six and close parentheses. So one thing to bear in mind is if I drag this down, you'll notice how this changes to B3 instead of B2. What I need to do here is I just need to lock these values by clicking F4. And I'll do a video on this in future. And I'll just drag this down like this. So what we can see is we can see we've got the values here staying stationary, but it is pulling in the right values here. Now, one thing to bear in mind, if you do run into issues with this, uh, for it not returning data that is there, you need to make sure that this data that you have here is sorted alphabetically. So in my case, it is. Now, the next function that we'll look at is HLOOKUP. And HLOOKUP works exactly the same as VLOOKUP, except for horizontal data. So in this case here, I have a table A through D and a corresponding value of one through four. So what I can do here, I specify it the same as I did before. So I go equals HLOOKUP, open parentheses. I need to specify the lookup value, the table array, I will just lock that with F4. The row index, so I wanted to return the second row of data. And I also want approximate match to be off, so exact match only. So it's got one. And if I drag that down, I can see that it's returning the correct value. So if I change these values here, so test text, 
like this, it will return the corresponding values further up. Let's look at XLOOKUP. XLOOKUP is a recent addition to Microsoft Office, which does the same thing as VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP. You specify the lookup column or row, and then the return column or row. And based on the index, it will then return the corresponding values. So what I can do here is I will do the same thing as I've done above, except using XLOOKUP only. So to pull that up equals XLOOKUP. The lookup value is going to be the name. The lookup array, I just need to specify the column that it needs to look up this data in. May as well just lock that data. The next thing that it will require is a return array. So here what I'll do is I'll just move over to the salaries column and I'll also lock that. And then you can add additional values in here. So if it doesn't find a particular name, you can have it put in an error message here, you can specify what match mode and you can specify what search mode. Now. Generally, there's no need to change any of these options unless you want to specify a message if a value has not been found. Match mode, though, is defaulting to exact matches only, so you don't need to specify the false in this one either. So all I've needed to specify is the lookup value, the lookup array, and the return array. And then I just close the parentheses on that. And there we go, I get the same as up here. If I drag that down, I have everybody's salaries like that. Now, similarly, I can do the same thing as the HLOOKUP function by typing equals x lookup. I specify the lookup value as I did before, and then I will specify the lookup array, which is that, lock it with F4, and then specify the return array, which is this, and then also lock that with F4. There we go, and I can just drag that down. So now all I need to do is uh, change this value to say test text like I did before, and potato over here. And I can see that it reflects in here straight away. And the last thing we'll look at is the match function. So what we're going to do is look up whether or not a particular name appears in a list and then what the position of that particular name is. Now, in this case, what I need to type is equals match. Then I need to specify the value that I'm looking up. So that's the name, the lookup array, so if I go to data and select the name array here, I will lock that cell as well. The next thing in the match function that it wants me to look up is the match type, which is either less than exact match or greater than. Now I want exact match, so that's zero, and then close brackets. And that shows me that Saif Weiss is in position 424, and what I can do is I can come back over here. Notice that row one is the, the headers. So if I go down to row 424 or 425 in this instance, I should see safe Weiss there. Now, why is this useful? You can see if a particular name is there. So for example, if I were to look up my name, I can see that it returns an error. And you can have the error handling gracefully by saying is error like this and that will just return false because there's no error like this and then you can reverse that by chucking a not out the front so if not false is true and not true is false so there we go so we can see whether or not somebody is in a list so let's see if florian is in the list and that is false now, the formulas that we've covered here are just the tip of the iceberg, but they're the ones that I find form a very solid base for pulling information out of tables and data. We've covered listing unique elements, count A, count blank, count if, sum if, VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, XLOOKUP, and MATCH. I hope that you found something useful in here. I would love to hear feedback and suggestions in the comments below. So if you want to see a video in future about a particular topic, or if there's a better way that you found of doing some of these things, let me know in the comments and uh, I'll potentially do a video about them in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to share this with somebody else who might find it useful and uh, I'll see you in the next video.